Hi everybody and welcome back to Growing Up in Scientology. I want to answer a really short and sweet question that comes up. I get this question on the YouTube channel and I get this question a lot in uh, the supporters of Leah Remini Group on Facebook. And the question is, uh, it's usually in reference to some video I've posted or some post that I've made where I use the phrase Church of Scientology. And the question or the comment that I get very frequently is, why do you say church? in Church of Scientology. And there is a very good reason, so here's the answer. So first, let me just read the answer that I posted on Facebook. And I copied this answer and I've been pasting it um, on YouTube in response to this question and other places on Facebook. So that's why it was like, okay, let's just do a video giving the answer, then I can stop copying and pasting it everywhere. So here's what I wrote. I wrote, there's a difference between calling it a church and calling it by its name. It has a legal name. The legal name is Church of Scientology. So whereas some people may choose to leave off the church as often as possible, as I actually do, it's not true that by simply calling it by its name, one is validating its status as a church. I'm also not 100% sure that the people who make this argument fully understand what is or is not a quote unquote real church. I think many people get caught up in whether they feel Scientology is the same as whatever their own religion is, or whether Scientology is as true as whatever their own religion is, or whether Scientology should be tax exempt. Such things really have nothing to do with whether something is or is not a quote unquote real church. The argument also implies, meaning the, the argument that I shouldn't say Church of Scientology. The argument also implies that church is somehow a positive word, which I'm not sure everybody would agree with either. So that is a simple explanation that I've given. And I think I want to expand on that a little bit. Now I covered this in a video I posted, uh, it feels like a couple weeks ago now. Um, and the video I'm referring to is the one about Christy Woods, uh, this lady who's never been in Scientology and is out there saying that uh, sometime around 1986, she was brought to the international base and held as David Miscavige's personal and private sex slave for a decade and fathered six of his children. And Shelly Miscavige would come in and watch Dave rape her. And all this uh, crazy nonsense that um, if someone's absolutely never been in Scientology, um, it's not that hard to maybe uh, believe that something like that could be true. For anybody who's been in the Sea Organization or been at the international base, um, they know instantly this is complete horseshit. And for some people in the Scientology watching community, or even some former Scientologists, I was really surprised to see that there were a handful of people out there who actually fell for this nonsense and have even been promoting it. So um, I did a video on that subject. And at the end of that video, I explained why I sometimes take it very personally and respond pretty harshly to um, stories that are put out there that are just complete nonsense and rubbish. And I realize by even saying this, it sounds like there's a lot of them. There aren't, this does not happen frequently. This happens infrequently. But I respond pretty harshly, not just to the stories, but to people in the Scientology watching community who not only promote such nonsense stories, but actually um, harshly respond to former Scientologists who, who would dare to say something like, hey, these stories are nonsense. And, um, and I respond very harshly to this kind of thing happening. And one of the reasons I explained previously, and I'll explain again right now, that I do respond so harshly uh, is because of how destructive it is to the world of under the radar Scientologists, or I should say, people who are still in Scientology that are starting to question and starting to wander onto some of these internet forums um, like Facebook, or maybe it's Tony Ortega's blog, or maybe it's the X Scientology message board, or um, I don't even know if Xenu.net is still active. But some of these forums where Scientology issues are discussed, and when these Scientologists who are starting to question things, they wander into these forums. If they see and read things that are just so over the top, so exaggerated, full of such nonsense, and not only do they see these stories um, out there, but they see people just lining up to believe them. It actually prevents those people from exploring further. Um, these people that are in Scientology that are starting to question things, uh, you have to understand these people have been indoctrinated for a very long time that all criticism against Scientology comes from uh, just vested interests who are threatened by Scientology's existence. 
Um, they are indoctrinated to believe that these vested interests see Scientology as a threat on their own control of basically planet Earth, <laughs> the media establishments of planet Earth, um, the politics, the governments of planet Earth. Um, these Scientologists believe that the vested interests control this planet through psychiatry, that they use psychiatry as a tool to infiltrate the education systems, the prison systems, um, and, and, and governments, and that these vested interests see Scientology as the only thing that threatens their control over planet Earth, and that all attacks against Scientology comes from these vested interests and people working for them, people who are literally being paid by them. This is why you'll see Scientology be very quick um, to try to label its critics as people who work for Big Pharma. That's like a signaling thing that Scientology does to Scientologists, that these critics are part of this um, army of mobilized, you know, pseudo activists who are really working for big pharma and big psychiatry and big government and whatever. I mean, this is the mindset that people who have spent a lot of time in Scientology have, particularly if they've been raised in Scientology. So if they start wading into these forums and they see things being discussed and they see things being believed that they just know are totally false or God forbid, are actually true, but are so far beyond the experience of your ordinary Scientologists that they believe them to be false. It actually um, sort of acts as a thought stopper right there. They see that shit and they're like, oh, these guys are just a bunch of freak assholes who are everything I've always thought they were. So I guess there's nothing more for me to see here. And as I explained at the tail end of this video I posted a few weeks ago, that actually happened to me back in the year 2000, between 2000 and 2000, between 1998 and the year 2000, there was a period of two years of my life where I was actually completely sort of divorced from Scientology and had waded into these internet forums and was just completely turned off and repulsed by the kind of hatred and um, exaggeration and falsehoods that I saw in there that I was like, eh, Guess there's nothing to see here. Jesus, I was looking for some excitement and all I see is a bunch of nonsense and bullshit. And um, the fact is, at, uh, that could have been when I left Scientology. I could have left Scientology between 98 and 2000. Um, and because of how turned off I was by the type of stuff I saw online, I didn't. it didn't even occur to me to leave. It didn't even occur to me to leave. Um, and, and even after that point, I went back and rejoined staff and finished my contract. And then I joined the C organization and all of that occurred in my life after going onto these internet forums where I should have been able to see enough truth to start, um, to get me to really question things and open my eyes and leave Scientology, but it didn't happen. And it didn't happen because the stuff on those forums, at least in my eyes at that time, was simply not credible. It just did not meet the standard of anything that I would consider credible. So I'm personally um, uh, continue to be very wary and conscious of the fact that in order for the material that I put out or the videos that I do or the conversations that I try to have to be truly, truly valuable, they have to be valuable to the people who are actually in Scientology and starting to make their way out. I'm not interested in just contributing to the conversation of, hey, everybody, look at how bad Scientology is. I mean, look, if you watch my videos, you know how bad Scientology is. Nobody really needs to be convinced of that. I don't need to lend my voice to that. There's plenty of voices that have been doing that for a long time. One of the reasons I even started doing my videos is I thought I could add something um, slightly new, something slightly unique and something slightly valuable to the conversation, which is, um, Try to be as fair as possible. Not to just give Scientology a fair shake, but so that when Scientologists stumble into these forums and realize, and you know, I'm, I'm talking about just YouTube now, and they start Googling Scientology, you know, if they start seeing my videos, one, chances are they already know who I am. Two, I want the first thing that strikes them about my videos to see how fair-minded I seem to be on this subject. I don't want them to go, wow, this guy really seems like he has an ax to grind, or this guy seems really bitter, or just, this guy just seems butthurt, or wow, you know, this guy's just angry. That's not how I talk about Scientology. It's not how I talk about my experience in Scientology. And yet, nobody who watches my videos could really misunderstand whether I am pro or against 
in being involved in Scientology. There's no question I'm against, but I want to talk about it in, in a way that is easy for Scientologists to hear. And so I don't feel like I'm actually accomplishing anything by saying the cult of Scientology. It's like, we all know it's a cult, guys. I mean, I'm not endorsing Scientology by calling it the Church of Scientology. So anyway, I want the content of my conversation to be what matters and not just little virtue signaling things like um, the cult of Scientology or the Church of Scamatology or or whatever, like little words like that aren't going to be what moves the needle. What moves the needle is going to be the content of the conversation. That's what I personally have chosen to stay focused on. Um, you know, sometimes I will make fun of Scientology almost inadvertently. Like if I start talking about the OT levels and I start describing what's on the OT levels, it's very hard for me to do that with a straight face and I'll start laughing about it. I just can't help. The more time I spend away from Scientology, the more ridiculous and silly and funny it is to try to discuss and, and talk about some of these things. But I try not to do content that is just ridiculing Scientologists or ridiculing the subject of Scientology. I really try to focus on the content. So uh, kind of a long-winded answer to a short question. Why do you call it a church? It's not a church. It's a cult. Yes, yes, we agree. It's okay. I'm having a conversation. The organization is called the Church of Scientology. I will very often refer to it as that. And yet I will not hesitate to say the Church of Scientology is a cult. See, you can do both of these things at the same time. <laughs> you can call it the Church of Scientology and you can say it's a cult. All right, that's my answer. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you guys soon. Bye. Okay, if you want to see my rock and roll songs, click right on this guitar. And if you want to see an, a different one of my videos, uh, then you could click right inside here. If you have subscribed or not, subscribe right here. Bye!